silence your cell phones now. Thunder Force, remember it. You don't say it like, you know, Thunder Force, you say Thunder Force. What's going on, YouTube? It's SC Place Me Tell Troy, Mr. A and D. Back you guys on the movie experience. And this time we're doing uh the, the newest movie that hit Netflix this weekend, which is this movie that starred Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer, Thunder Force. So Thunder Force is about these two middle-aged women who are get superpowers to actually stop other superpower beings that are in their world because in this world the people who have superpower beings are known as miscreants that uh actually are using their powers for bad and they uh killed octavia spencer's parents when she was younger so she's been all into the books to, cre to create her own superpowers to go take out these miscreants and then miss mccarthy has been her best friend ever since but been more like the failure kind of best friend type thing until the, uh she actually gets into her lab and get injects herself with superpowers by accident. And now these two had to team back up after all these years apart to go take out these miscreants. So let's see if that was a handful. Let's just figure this out. So let, let's uh go into this. So we, I'm gonna give you guys the good, I'm gonna give you guys the bad, I'm gonna give you guys the experience. So start off with the good. All right, so first off, when it comes to the good, I, I think I did not mind the pairing of Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. Uh, at first, I was like, oh my God, they, it, it, this don't look like a good parent at all. They're going to do a lot of clashing together, whatever the case may be. I'm not necessarily here for it, but I felt as though that it wasn't that bad. It was tolerable. I'm not going to sit there saying, they're the greatest duo ever. We're, we're the three, you know, two best friends that ever lived. No, I say it was a tolerable thing, like to the point where it wasn't like, I felt as though Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy was really good. Uh, it, it, it kind of bounced things out a little bit. Uh, I think it's not on that level, but I feel as though that it, it's it's more of a tolerable thing. Uh, there are sometimes I did laugh. Okay, when usually just Melissa McCarthy movies, like I swear it, every time I was like, I don't laugh. They're not funny, because, or they're not my taste of, of comedy, or they try too hard. Whatever the case may be, there were times in this one that I did actually laugh. So, I mean, I can count them, okay? Don't get me wrong, I can count them because I actually did laugh, but I, uh, I actually did laugh. I'll tell you, Spencer's always good at everything she, that she's in, especially with the role and the writing that has been, you know, uh, giving to her. She plays more of the nerd and uh, <clears throat> or the very smart kid who's all about her work type thing. And she kind of just was McCarthy kind of dirty in this movie as when, it, when, when they're actually trying to grow up. And, you know, she she has to learn from her, basically. It, we, we see it before, how to have fun, something like that. But however, we didn't go much more on that aspect, which I'll get into in my bed a little bit. And uh, Jason Bateman is in this. Uh, he has that kind of humor. It's just like that, that matter of factly kind of humor. And, you know, sometimes he makes you laugh, sometimes he doesn't. Th th this this role to me annoyed me. But, uh, just say, he... he it's, it's whatever type of thing, you know what I'm saying? And uh, one thing I, the one thing that's cool about the movie is the movie don't take itself seriously. The movie knows it's gonna be trash. The movie knew coming out here, this is making about two middle-aged superhero women. It ain't, this ain't gonna be no Oscar-worthy contender. This is not gonna, this is not gonna be on the rise. They know that. And it doesn't take, it doesn't try to make take themselves too seriously at all. Okay, so I, I will appreciate that. But that's my good styles, because we gotta get into the bad. All right, the bad is where it always falls with these kind of Melissa McCarthy movies and to the point where the overall, there are jokes that are in this movie. I, I, I said in the good that I actually did laugh and I actually can count how many times I laughed because the times that I was not laughing or because the joke went on too long. There are these times in these comedy movies where you're sitting there watching them and I'm like, the, the jokes is going too long. There is just joke after joke. I'm like, okay, that would have been funny if you stopped it here. Or that would have been funny if you stopped it there. But no, they're going to keep on going and keep on going with the joke and keep on going with the joke. And I'm like, it's dead in the water. I'm like, it's, it's dead. Y'all killed it. And y'all thinking by making it even more funny, by keep on going with it, it doesn't work that way. And that's what this movie is full of. And I'm like, there, there's just too many of the jokes that just keeps on going on. There's an Urkel joke that's in this movie up to the point like, can y'all please stop? Like... Duh, 
stop. It's 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 done. There's a raw chicken joke in this one that it just keeps on going. There's a Jody Foster joke here that keeps on going. It just keeps on going. I'm like, oh my god. I mentioned Jason Bateman uh in, in, in my earlier one. Uh, not my early, uh my good, but then when it comes to the bad, I'm like, he he plays this character, it's in a trailer where you know they got these these lop these lobster hands or crab hands, whatever the case may be, and it just looks terrible. It 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 really like they could have picked something a better kind of power for it. It, it just it just looks bad <laughs> to be honest with you. It's actually a distraction every time he comes up on on, on there. But but this is a, this is the role that he plays. And these are his kind of Jason Bateman type roles. So whatever the case may be, uh, there is if you're going to play the trope of where somebody is very very smart and they don't go out and have fun they basically got a, st- a, a, a stick up their ass and you had the other one who is more down to earth and you know they look at more as the failure type thing uh i feel as though there needs to be some balance of you know showing how they can come in and uh turn somebody's life around did not happen that way at all like kind of like how i said the heat with melissa mccarthy obviously was the cop so signed to bull out but she was the stick of her ass cop and melissa mccarthy had had her way of doing you know saying you know, gotta be on the road type cop that was funny to me and i felt as though it it it, it bled over to sandra bullock's character whereas in this one i feel so like they, they, they never did anything with her and octavia spencer to the point it was just like they just really beat down the fact that melissa mccarthy was i'm like first of all she works in a construction. I, I hate the trope where they they, they feel as though that when you're a garbage man, or you're or you're a construction worker, or you dealing with jobs that gotta get your hands dirty, that these people are broke. Do you not know that there are garbage men and construction workers that make more money than teachers? These occupations make some good money, and they always come down to the, their rundown apartment. They never have no food in their fridge. They never got anything that goes on like that. I'm like, hold on now. That's just a slap in the face of these people out here that they actually go ahead and do, the, do these jobs. Because these jobs, these dirty jobs, these are called, you remember that show back on Discovery Channel? These dirty jobs got need something, need people to do them, and they make some good money off of that. But I just hate the trope that it makes it seem like when you got a dirty job, then you, you got a dirty type life. And whereas Octavia Spencer's the scientist and she got all the money, and all of a sudden she creates her own company and stuff like that. Like, hold on. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I get what y'all trying to say here. But then, even then, Miss McCarty is just like she feels. She knows that she feels like she's a failure, but she protected Octavia Spencer in the beginning and everything to the point where it's like she actually legit wants to just still be her friend type thing. And I'm like, Octavia Spencer kind of just really pushes her off because of one incident that happened. And I was just like, you know, this happens a lot in movies, but it's it's usually kind of different. I was like, damn, you're kind of being an asshole to her who she really stepped in for you like that and when they got older it, 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 there was nothing about like taking her out to the club or showing her everything that she missed growing up because she's been so into her books and instead they kind of do that with another character and i'm like we're missing the boat here okay I, and i say but I, it's the most Cardi movie that should put that much thought into it but now guys we can get into now the experience and maybe some slight spoils but most of all the experience <laughs> All right, for the experience, it's, it's, it's no, there's no spoilers really to get into. For the experience, like I said, I watched it. Uh, it came out Netflix late. Usually, I, I figured it'd come out by 3 a.m. for the, uh, the, the Pacific time. But it, 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 I had to wait till like 7 something in the morning for this to come out. And I'm not saying I'm sitting there waiting for Thunder Force because I was too busy watching Cap, uh, Cap, Falcon and Winter Soldier. But when it came out, I just sat there and watched it. Like I said, I didn't have a horrible time watching it. Trust me. There will never be right now a Mr. McCarthy movie that's worse than Tammy. Tammy was terrible. I bought it new and returned it back. I still, I, 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 I never do that with movies, but I had to get, I had to get rid of Tammy. That was terrible. So, uh, is it the greatest movie? No. Is it? It was it, but is it so terrible to the point like it's cringing my eyes? I'm like, it's, it's stupid. They don't take itself seriously at all. So, I'm going to give Thunder Force a catch there at a barbershop. That's how you would catch this movie anyway. I mean, I can t- point to hashtag give it a chance. I'm just like, but if you're not a fan of Melissa McCarthy or Octavia Spencer, then this ain't the movie for you. But if you just want to go ahead and see these two middle-aged women uh, go ahead and get some kind of laughs, then you're yeah, sure. Why, why not give it a hashtag give it a chance? But most likely, catch it at a barbershop. You know what I'm saying? You, you go in somebody else's house and everything, and even like, hey, man. Oh, that's on? Yeah, I sit down and watch it. That's what it is. 
All right, guys, so post any comments down below. How do you guys feel about Thunder Force? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Is it Liz McCartney's worst movie, or is it one of the better ones? It's not one of the better ones. Uh, hit the like button if you guys enjoyed my, uh, my review, obviously. Hit the subscribe button for more movie experiences every single weekend right here on NC Studios. So once again, it's NC and Place to Be. Show, show, Mr. Andy, and I'll see you at the movies.